Hi, everyone. Thank you for your interest in what we consider to be California's most charismatic fish. I'm Melissa Studer, Director of Grenion Breeders and Treasurer of the Beach Ecology Coalition. Grenion are small, silvery fish known for their spectacular spawning behavior. During the spring and summer months, the fish come completely out of the water to reproduce on sandy beaches. This happens after the highest tides associated with a full moon or a new moon, which incidentally is always in the middle of the night. Grenion are endemic to California and parts of Baja, found nowhere else in the world. So whether you are a seasoned Grenion greeter or a new Grenion observer, we thought this video might provide some helpful information for you before you head to the beach. Also, we would very much appreciate receiving a report from your experience. So bear with me while I pull up some visuals as we talk more about the Grenin, my favorite subject matter. Grenin greeters, these are our volunteer citizen scientists. They're out on the beach, out on the beaches collecting data during the runs. It's important for us to get consistent information, both within each season and from one year to the next. We use the data and research to determine population trends and assess the health of the species. We also work with many, many municipalities throughout the state of California to keep them protected from activities such as beach grooming and sand replenishment. And because the Grunion are running simultaneously throughout such a broad area, there's just no practical way for, to, for us to collect all the data we need without the help of volunteers. This is our website, it's easy to remember, grunion.org. This has a wealth of information, um, research articles, photos, video clips, current project updates, and links to all sorts of information that uh, might help as you attempt to see a bring-in one. Also on our home page, there is a documentary, a link to a documentary that we created. It's actually award-winning. It's only about 25 minutes long. And it includes everything you need to know about the biology and behavior of the fish. So I encourage you to please take a look at it. Also on our website, there's a link on the left for when do they run, as well as some frequently asked questions that I encourage you to scan through as well. Each year, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife publishes a schedule of all potential Grenion runs. This is from as early as March to as late as August. There are four nights after the full moon or the new moon when runs may occur. However, we focus on specific dates and nights that we consider to be peak spawning season. This is when runs tend to be strongest and most consistent. So April, May, and June. We also monitor the third and fourth nights after the full moon or the new moon, because again, it tends to be a little bit more consistent on those nights. So those are circled in blue there. Um, the time, represents high tide plus two hours. So this is a window any time within which the grenion may run. So you have to bring a little bit of patience and also keep in mind it's wildlife. So sometimes they might show up a little early or stay a little bit late. The, the fish are not responding to my emails or texts. So they only are the ones that exactly know when they're gonna show up. So April and May is closed season, June is open season. What that means, closed season, no take of any kind is allowed, no contact with a fish at all. Open season means you are allowed to fish for them, but with restrictions. So if you're over 16, you have to have a fishing license. You may only use your bare hands to catch the fish. No gear, no nets, you can't scoop them in a bucket. Um, you have to use your bare hands. It's actually not all that difficult to catch them. So the Department of Fish and Wildlife also stipulates that you may only take what you can use. They don't want you wasting fish. We advocate observe and conserve here at the Brennan Breeder Project. Uh, we want to keep this species protected for future generations to enjoy. 
So another super common question we get is where's the best spot? And as I already alluded to, we really only the fish know for certain. So we do know that they may run on any flat sandy beach. The wider, the better. They also prefer areas without a lot of flashing light, noise and activity. So if there's a big bonfire party down at the beach with live music and under people running around, that's probably not an ideal place to go at that particular site. Try to head someplace uh, a little bit uh, quieter and even darker if possible. The specific sites where they show up very widely, both within a season and from one season to the next. We can't recommend a particular beach to you because conditions change. So what might be a great site one year might experience a lot of erosion over the winter and become a narrow, not as ideal. Um, also, knowing where they ran one night doesn't help you the next night. They're neither more or less likely to run there again. So again, bring a little bit of luck with you. So over the years, we've monitored many, many sites from San Diego to San Francisco. Generally speaking, uh, Southern California has the, the, the better runs. Um, recently, we are seeing them farther and farther north. Um, so that's, interpret that as you want, but they, are, they do seem to be moving more and more north. So the night of your monitoring, we want you to dress appropriately. It's cold and damp often down on the beach in the middle of the night and just be aware of where you park try to find areas that are more well lit um, if possible meet up with people before you head out to the beach if, if you're joining others um, your safety is utmost important to us if you're uncomfortable at any time it's best that you just leave and or call 911. so in terms of your success your behavior plays a role as well as the behavior of others at the site. So if you're standing like this group and you're quiet and you're calm and you're not running around, it'll give the, chance, give the fish a chance to come in in stronger numbers and for the run to build. It's best not to go chasing small groups of fish up and down the beach because you'll spend the whole night doing that. We think that they can sense the vibrations of your feet in the sand and that might actually deter them from coming in and running. So use a flashlight if you need to, but use it sparingly parallel to the beach. Um, they don't like a lot of flashing light. Um, if it's consistent like a spotlight, that doesn't seem to bother them as much. You'd also be su surprised at how well your eyes will adjust um, even on a new moon night. Now, as you're down at the beach and you're slowly monitoring the site, walking up and down, we want you to take note of what you're seeing. And so you're not going to be counting fish. It's just not practical. Instead, you're going to be assessing the strength of the run, sort of like how we name hurricanes uh, or score hurricanes. So we've developed a Walker scale named after Dr. Boyd Walker, who pioneered running research as we know it in the 40s at Scripps. He actually figured out that they run according to the lunar cycle. So a W0 would be no fish or maybe just a couple individual fish without any sign. A W1 would be 10 to 100, um, some spawning, uh, a little bit of spawning or no spawning. A W2 is a couple hundred fish, up to 500 fish uh, scattered up and down the beach or maybe in one area with some spawning activity. W3, hundreds to a thousand fish spawning in one big location or several locations along the beach. This would be considered a great run. A W4 would be thousands of fish across a wide area of the beach. And the ultimate is a W5. We don't see those very often anymore, unfortunately, but this is when fish are covering pretty much every inch of the sand. And it also means that the run is lasting an hour, hour or more. Sometimes that's the only difference between a four and a five is, is the length of the run lasting. So here's some more visuals for you. Uh, with a W0 there on the left, you might see a couple of fish. W1, just a few fish, um, really not much spawning activity happening. 
and then a W2, we're talking several hundred fish uh, in one location or several locations. A W3 is a nice, nice stronger run now. There's a pair of our grinding breeders that are that are very happy. It was actually their first night attempting um, a grinding run. I was down there with them and, and they were thrilled. So you can see that's that's uh, hundreds of fish behind them there. And this was this was going on in patches all up and down the beach. A W4, now we're talking thousands of fish together of our broader area or or basically as far as you can see up the beach. And then the W5, um, even stronger and lasting uh, an hour or more over a large area. So that's absolutely spectacular. So we'd love to hear from you whether or not you saw a grinding run. Zero is a number. So the sooner the better you can submit a report. We'd really appreciate it. Um, you can do that by going back to our website. Um, the fish icon here is a link to the report that you see on the left. There's also a QR code. You can scan it and even fill out the report right down at the beach if you'd like. So I'll go through the form. Um, most of it's pretty self-explanatory, but there are a few key things that I want to point out. Um, the runs often last till after midnight. So technically the date would be the next morning, but we want you to consider it the night that you were there. And that just keeps it simple for us. Um, so we know exactly when you were there. So use the night of date, or the night before technically, if it goes till after midnight. We want to know where, which county, and specifically which beach. So however you can describe the beach with various names of the beach um, or areas within that particular beach, if you can make a note of that, we'd appreciate that as well. Uh, what time you were there, how many people were with you, and of course, if you saw a random night. So we want to know when the fish showed up and when they stopped. So I should also mention that as you're down there, you see some fish, hopefully it builds and you see a nice run and then the, it tapers off and the run ends. That's it for the night. There there's, won't be a second run. Usually it builds and builds and then eventually it will taper off. So if it happens early, you can leave before uh, the two hours. If you leave early, you just might miss the run, which happens frequently, unfortunately. Um, now we want you to assess the strength of the run using that Walker scale from a W0 to a W5. And I want to point this out. This is at the peak of the run. You're going to score it when the run is at its best. So think of it that way because it's going to be changing constantly. If you're not sure if, say, it's a 2 or a 3, we say call it a 2 and then include it in your notes that you leave on the form um, that you thought it was a very strong two, possibly a three. We also want you to, to give a little bit of a description about the run and how big the run was, as well as comments if you have them. Weather, we'd like to know about that. Uh, if it's full on downpouring, they're not likely to run. If it's just drizzling or lightly raining, they will run. If it's cloudy, they will run. Somehow there's a myth out there that they won't run if it's cloudy. We don't know how that got started, but that's absolutely not true. Was there any rack on shore? Um, and how many other people were on the beach? Did you see any predators? This can be as spectacular as the fish themselves. There's a shovel-nosed guitar fish here and a young sea lion pup. Um, birds, you'll see lots of birds, night herons, as well as other birds that are not nocturnal, yet they show up on spawning nights. So how do they know? We're not sure. But they're also a great indicator that a run might be brewing. You see birds all lined up and down the beach. Hang with them. They know. Quietly and carefully. Don't spook them either. Where there are artificial lights. So lots of waving flashlights might deter them. Steady spotlight would be okay. People running around, people quiet and calm. All of those things may negatively impact um, the run. So poaching. This is when someone is touching or taking the fish during those closed months of April and May, as well as someone who is taking the fish during open season, but by improper means. So in other words, this woman using the net uh, to try to scoop up the fish, she is considered a poacher. We do want to know about it. There's a place on the form where you can indicate that. Um, you can also call it in to Caltip 
uh, it's, it's mostly recording line. Usually you will not get a phone call back. You might, but they do track the calls and make a note of the poaching incidents and where. And if there are certain areas where they're getting a lot of reports of poaching, they might send some wardens out and, and crack down on it. So, so that is helpful as well. We want to get a sense of how experienced you are. So that's uh, point 17. And then were you able to attend one of our training workshops for our Brendan Greeter volunteers? as well as any other comments you might have. Here we would like your information in case we need to contact you for clarification. Um, please know that we absolutely will not contact you unless you have agreed to it. Um, if you want to be on our mailing list, uh, it's, it's just for us. We don't share it and you will only hear about Grenia. So, for example, um, before runs during that peak time of year, I will send out a message to everybody on our interest list reminding them, yes, the Grenier runs are coming up, here's the time, here's the link where we want to report, et cetera, et cetera. And if at any time you change your mind or you move, just let me know and I'll take you off the list and you won't hear from me again. We also want to know who else is out there with you. So that's the nuts and bolts of grinding greeting. And uh, I wish you luck. Uh, I thank you for taking the time to listen to this. Please share, uh, share broadly. Um, we have had inconsistent data uh, lately, thanks to COVID and all kinds of other challenges. So I will say also when it, uh, when it comes to choosing your site, you want to make sure you are allowed to be there, um, whether it be COVID closure or sometimes the beaches do close at night. So check with your local municipalities, obey the parking signs, et cetera, and be safe and have fun. Good luck. Thank you.